cloud. There we go. <clears throat> so welcome tonight to St. Michael Fraternity's April gathering. And I will start with prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So I thought since we are going to begin our study of the Fratelli Tutti, um, and it's all about fraternity and social friendship, it just so happened that today's Pray More Novenas from John, Paul, and Annie is on day eight of the Novena for the Divine Mercy. And so it, it kind of fits a little bit. And so I thought we would, we would go ahead and pray today's Novena. And it says from John, Paul, and Annie, um, today we want to pray for something that can be difficult. We want to pray that we have mercy on others. We want us to pray that we will never hold a grudge or refuse forgiveness. We need God's mercy so much. So let's pray that we can be like Jesus in being exceedingly generous with the mercy that we show to others. And so for today, um, Jesus says to St. Faustina, today bring me the souls who are detained in purgatory and immerse them in the abyss of my mercy. Let the torrents of my blood cool down their scorching flames. All these souls are greatly loved by me. They are making retribution to my justice. It is in your power to bring them relief. Draw all the indulgences from the treasury of my church and offer them on their behalf. Oh, if you only knew the torments they suffer, you would continually offer for them the alms of the spirit and pay off their debt to my justice. And so most merciful Jesus, on just a second. Okay. Sorry, I wanted to mute because we were getting some back background noise. Most merciful Jesus, you yourself have said that you desire mercy. So I bring into the abode of your most compassionate heart the souls in purgatory, souls who are very dear to you and yet who must make retribution to your justice. May the streams of blood and water which gushed forth from your heart put out the flames of purgatory that there too the power of your mercy may be celebrated. Eternal Father, turn your merciful gaze upon the souls suffering in purgatory who are unfolded in the most compassionate heart of Jesus. I beg you by the sorrowful passion of Jesus, your son, and by all the bitterness with which his most sacred soul was flooded, manifest your mercy to the souls who are under your just scrutiny. Look upon them in no other way, but only through the wounds of Jesus, your dearly beloved son. For we firmly believe that there is no limit to your goodness and compassion. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, Diane, when you're ready to share, just unmute yourself. And everybody is muted, but um, as she goes on, she'll say whether she wants us to join in or not. All right, so we've been talking at uh, council and I think also uh, often on at the meetings about starting to do some things with Fratelli Tutti, the uh, Pope's encyclical on fraternity and social friendship. Uh, he actually issued this on October 3rd in Assisi, um, uh, in the same way that Laudato Si was. This is strongly rooted in um, the, the writings and the spirituality of St. Francis. Um, so I think it's something that, that we would do well to spend, to spend some time on. What I'd like to do tonight is to do kind of an overview of the letter. The letter is long, it's, it's got eight chapters, um, but there's a, there's a nice study guide that a number of people, um, I think in and out of the Fr Franciscan Federation uh, have, have put together. 
So I thought I'd, I'd do a little bit with that, a little bit with the letter itself. Um, and as we go through it, uh, obviously, you know, if, if any of you have read the have read the encyclical, please feel free to chime in. Uh, and then also, as the different topics come up, um, just just kind of just kind of keep a keep a mental note on which ones you'd like to go more deeply into um, as we go through meetings the next uh, the next several months. So with that, um, you know, I started with the study guide and then I actually went to the letter itself. And I think for the introduction, I'm gonna go mostly from the letter itself. Uh, it starts out for Telly Tutti with these, these words, St. Francis of Assisi addressed his brothers and sisters and proposed to them a way of life marked by the flavor of the gospel. Uh, it was interesting when I, I checked the footnote to see, uh, most I was looking for an act, actual translation of Fratelli Tutti and um, wasn't really able to find it. But what I did find was that the, the admonition that that is taken from is let us look to the good shepherd who suffered the passion of the cross to save his sheep. Uh, that's been such a theme for Pope Francis. Um, the idea of, you know, we, we shepherd from within the flock. Uh, and I think that's, that's very much what, um, what he's doing with this letter. So the, uh, the, the other thing that really struck me is, you know, he's, he refers to what, you know, what he had done with, with Laudato Si, you know, the saint of fraternal love, simplicity and joy who inspired me to write the encyclical Laudato Si, prompts me once more to devote this new encyclical to fraternity and social friendship. Francis felt himself a brother to the sun, the sea and the wind yet he knew that he was even closer to those of his own flesh. Wherever he went, he sowed seeds of peace and walked alongside the poor, the abandoned, the infirm and the outcast, the least of his brothers and sisters. So if, um, if, you, if you'd like to unmute, um, there's, a couple of, there's a couple of questions that we could talk about. Um, one I thought was really interesting was um, how can we speak the truth in love, challenging what justifies seemingly acceptable language for a particular action or inaction? How did Francis handle this challenge? No, that one's not really going to work. Sorry. Has, has anybody has anybody else read the encyclical? No, we have not. I've read parts of it. Yeah, I've actually dipped into uh, dipped into parts of it. I have yeah, a, I've read a, I've read a fair amount of it myself. I'm in the car right now, so I won't be able to respond. Brian, I, I know you are, Greg. You were going to be our second choice for doing the program, so I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad we didn't uh, impose that on you. Uh, Diane. Yes. Uh, what study guide are you referring to? Uh, um, it's on. I found. I, I found it. It's actually on the Franciscan Media website. Okay. Although I have to say, I wasn't aware that we were hosting it until um, until somebody was asking if they could if they could quote from it. So. Okay. Thank you. And um, you. when you quote from the encyclical, uh, could you mention the paragraph numbers so we can follow along? I I do have a copy. I've not read it yet. 
Uh, yes, the the what I what I've quoted so far was from um, paragraph one and paragraph two. Yep, I followed that much. Thank you. Yeah. And then and then the other the other thing that I thought was really interesting was in paragraph four. Um, Francis did not wage a war of words aimed at imposing doctrines. He simply spread the love of God. He understood that God is love and those who abide in love abide in God from the first letter of John. In this way, he became a father to all and inspired the vision of a fraternal society. And I, that's always struck me as so much the way, the way Francis and, and Franciscans uh, sort of approach, approach the world. It's not, you know, it's not this hard and fast black and white. This is, you know, this is what you have to believe or you're going to hell. Um, and I, I think Pope Francis sees that the divisions in our day have become so pronounced. You know, they're not a lot different than they were in Francis's day. You know, he goes on to say in the world of that time, bristling with watchtowers and defensive walls, cities were a theater of brutal wars between powerful families, even as poverty was spreading through the countryside. The one thing and, when you, you mentioned, I think something about the title just for, um, for two, how is it? For Fratelli. Tutti. Fratelli Tutti. Fratelli Tutti. And um, I think that, I think, I don't know if you said this or if I just read it, it means like all brothers and Francis used to use that, that phrase all the time. Mm -hmm. And it kind of reminds me like, I read a lot of Bishop Barron and he always starts his reflections of friends you know and it's kind of like his favorite way of referring to everybody and it's to me just that overall name the title is like all brothers all sisters and it doesn't mean that he's like saying all of you he's saying you're all family we're all together and and just right from the very beginning the name just i love it <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and 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 he, and he's very he's very clear that you know he brings in Francis and the Sultan. He's very clear that the you know that while this is obviously addressed to the church, it's also addressed to the world. It's addressed to everybody. This is um, well, he, and he, if we start with that same framework of looking at others that way of brother sister, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right away that changes your perspective right away that changes your right perspective. right we're all you know we're all in we're all in the human family and he also goes on to talk about we're not just all the human family but we're all related to the earth and all the environment all the animals and plants and stuff like that and we are wasting and destroying a lot of our environment. Mm -hmm. Like that all of creation is sacred. Exactly. All of creation. Yeah, and, it, and, it, and in fact, this is, this is almost like, it's almost like taking what he did in Laudato Si, and saying, okay, now let's let's just look at, look at the at the human side of this, and where you know where we fit into this this bigger picture. He he also points out that as he was writing this letter, is when is when the pandemic happened, and he said that did so much to expose, you know how interconnected we are, but also how difficult we find it to work with one another. And I think I was that, struck that's, by given, that. that's given us. I was struck by that very same thing and, and I couldn't help but think of a lot of the Asian attacks that have happened. And it's like, we really need to work 
to bring people together, not to divide. Mm -hmm. I shared a link on chat that's a, the Vatican document. So if anybody wants to look at it paragraph by paragraph, you can just click <coughs> it. Your browser should open it right up. Thanks, B. I think this is just so timely right now when you know you can draw the parallels between like Diane was saying the life at the time Francis lived and how there were the people at the top of the hill and then the people down in the swamp you know and now you can look at it like the people that have easy access to food and and money and, and vaccines and the people who don't you know it's almost the same um and it's frightening to think that we haven't advanced <laughs> very well mm -hmm. yeah I've, I've, I've been reading a lot of stuff around, around the middle ages and it's like wow this this feels really familiar <laughs> um, I, I i find because i've worked quite a bit with um with pope francis's words and I really appreciate that there's always sort of an undertone of hope, no matter what he what he's writing about, no matter how he's writing about it. <laughs> there's always, uh, I, I get the sense that he's just a very optimistic person. Uh, you know, he, he closes the introduction with let us dream then as a single human family, as fellow travelers sharing the same flesh, as children of the same earth, which is our common home. He, of us bringing the richness of his or her beliefs and convictions, each of us with his or her own voice, brothers and sisters all. <coughs> you know that, that that we can that we can have differences and unique perspectives, but they don't have to lead to division. And it has been going on for years. So you want to know, you know, you kind of you can't deny that it's part of the human condition to get, you know, um, I don't know. It, 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 it's, it's almost hey. like what? Well, it's almost like you have to absolutely fight against and reject that human condition of what's mine is mine instead of what's mine is ours. Yep. Um, and, and you have to really look for, I don't even want to call it enlightenment. That sounds kind of, um, you know, elitist, <laughs> um, just the, the realness, the, the earthiness of that, the humbleness of the creation, you know, um, and, and you have to, you have to actively seek that. Like, like how you teach little children to share, you know, they don't learn, to, they don't grow up knowing how to share. You have to teach it, you know, <laughs> you have to teach it. Since the, the 2015, 2016 election, I've been plugged in politically. I'm finding that is not, not a very satisfying thing to be plugged into because I want unity so bad, and it doesn't matter what side of the aisle you're on, you're not going to get that. You're going to get maybe, you know, I don't know what you call it, consensus. So I'm trying to unplug. I mean, I want to know what's going on, but I'm not investing like I used to. It, it's, it just, I don't know. It's well, not Jesus even that. Mary said, you know, give Caesar what Caesar's do. And right. right. Um, and right. so I kind of go back to that, but I struggle with the exact same thing yeah. that you mentioned. Yeah. And I'm, yeah. And I don't, I don't want to get out either side of the aisle. I just want us to be a unit unified country that tries to get, think for the best for everybody. And I feel like that's like pie in the sky. I, I'll, I'm probably never going to see, you know, that's hopefully it'll get better. 
but uh, anyways. You may not see it nationally, but you will see it locally. I mean, even if it's only in your own little circle, that's the only thing that you can actually do something about. I mean, unless you go on to the national scene. John used to listen to talk radio and be so in tune with the stock market and all this other stuff. He'd come home, he'd be listening to this stuff all day at work. He'd come home and just be so angry. I mean, he knew he was angry white man syndrome. And it's like, you got to stop listening to that crap. It's like, just read it, you know, take it for what it's worth. Okay, this person said this, this person said this. You say yourself, the truth is somewhere in the middle. So stop making yourself crazy with this stuff, you know? And uh, one of the last times we talked, I said, you know, I really want to challenge myself to identify as a Franciscan above and all else, you know, Christian and Franciscan, not right, left or whatever. And then I told Paula a couple of days after that, I said, then I really looked at what, it, what am I consuming? How much news and social media do I consume versus Bible and readings and reflection? And that was like a real smack upside the head. And it's like, okay, if I want to walk the walk and talk the talk, what am I consuming and who do I want to be? You are what you consume. So it was like not a pretty day to look in the mirror for me, Janine. <laughs> good, good, advi good advice. Thank you. Good. good. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, I've been, I've been pretty much unplugged from most. You know, obviously, I, if there's actual news happening, I'm aware of it, but. You know, all the commentary and the back and forth and the analysis. Um, I've been unplugged from that for about five years now. And I do not miss it. Yes, what, watching the news as, as authentic as it can be is one thing. And I think perhaps to some degree we have a responsibility to do that. But Diane, you're correct. All that commentary, all of these, the pundits and all of the people that have to tell us what we just heard, that's a waste of time. Amen. From a um, logistics perspective, like how did you guys know about Pope's encyclical? What do you sign up for to get the news from the Pope and the bishops and how do you stay plugged in? I mean, that's a pretty simple. Yeah, um, I actually, I follow, I follow the Vatican on Instagram. I mean, I, I, I'm obviously plugged in because of the work that I do. Um, but you can, you can sign up for the Vatican newsletter um, and they'll send you stuff regularly. Mm -hmm. And since I want to learn Italian, maybe I'll have a come in Italian, right? Um, if you, yeah, if you, if, you go to, if you go to the Vatican website, I think that was the link that B put in the chat, I think. You can, you can pick what language you want, you want to get it in. Yeah, and I actually follow Pope Francis on Twitter. That's when I put little quotes from him in my POPG mails, it's usually what he's put on Twitter and it's what he's thinking about at that particular moment. Um, and I find those somewhat illuminating. Bucks Now is a pretty balanced website that uh, is somewhat news oriented in terms mm -hmm. of what's going on in the Catholic world. What's it called? Yeah, repeat that. Uh, uh, crux C R U X now. Now, um, can you put that in the chat? Yep. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I think I can. Let me see. Let me see. If I can get pull up the address. I've I've got like three devices going here. <laughs> because I'll try to capture all this into an email later. Yeah. Yeah, it's you know as Pat, as Patrick was saying, it you do you have to you have to kind of balance that out with like how 
you need to be aware, you need to be informed, but where do you, where do you draw the line? Oh, that shouldn't have a, that shouldn't have a space in it. My, oh. That's okay, I'll fix it. Okay. My helpful autocorrect was, uh, did that change it? Thanks, B. <laughs> I think I I, I, be, I believe this is Pope Francis's third encyclical. I was going to look that up. This first one was joint with Benedict. And this one I don't think this one I don't think made quite the stir that Laudato Si did. Do you think that's because so many people right now are, are, are really kind of contemplating humanity? And so it's not as, it's a little more, yeah, I agree with that, you know, kind of approach rather than not. Sometimes well, I, I, think, I, think, I think I think the one on the environment really, you know, really made a stir because that's just such a huge. It's a controversial issue. topic, yeah. Yeah. Whereas, you know, really nobody wants us to talk about hey we should all get along <laughs> there, there's, there's a great line and I, and I can't remember it exactly in the in the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy where it says something about you know 200 years after somebody was hung on a tree for saying we should all be nice to each other yeah <laughs> Uh, and it's like, yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. I think the biggest Me, thing that oh. you said about the earth was that it's mostly harmless. <laughs> right, exactly. exactly. That was the big entry. <laughs> oh, gosh. Anyway, go on, Jean. <laughs> oh, you're fine. When I was looking at what uh, B sent the link out for, just like in title, you know, the first paragraph, some of these things that hit you aren't so much um, like, hey, we're all one, let's all get it wrong. But mm -hmm. where it starts to get challenging is when he starts talking about um, for a love that transcends the barriers of geography, distance, you know, mm -hmm. that's where it starts to like challenge your um, beliefs, actions called to duty um, in awareness, you know, like, wait, wait a minute, I'm not in my own little bubble. I'm in this bigger bubble and it all doesn't look like me. They all don't think like me. Mm -hmm. Well, even when you watch how, you know, and again, this is, you know, watching things on the news and trying to filter as we've all been sharing, you know, not taking what people are saying, but just watching what people are doing um, on the news. And it's, it's been an interesting study of humanity, the wide range of responses to everything that's going on, whether you're the type like, you know, I'm never leaving the house and I'm going to be, I'm never touching anybody ever again to, you know, people are out on the beach dance and saying, eh, if I get it, I get it. You know, <laughs> and there's such this wide range of response. And that's true, I think, even of uh, social justice, of, you know, the whole, you know, care of creation, um, the abortion issue. And you can take any issue that's of importance to mankind, and you'll see this spectrum of response um, in the whole um family of God, if you want to call it the family of God of humanity. It's, it's just, an, you know, if you just sit back as an observer of all these things, it's so fascinating, mm. depressing, but fascinating. <laughs> and yet, as, as Diane said, you know, but yet you can still feel a small sense of hope that, you know, there is that silent group of most people that are responding in the middle, just like any other statistical study. There's this huge bell curve and most mm -hmm. people are in this middle part that don't really go ah, one way or the other 
Yeah. And, you know, we happen to live in that part, I think, most of us. <laughs> so. Well, I think, you know, one of the things that he's, he's talking about, too, that we see coming to the front right now with the COVID is how interconnected we all are. And even though you say in the United States, we might all get vaccinated. If you've got third world nations that are not vaccinated, you're not safe. Mm -mm. Right. We all are interconnected and, you know, we need to lift everybody up. Yes. That is so true. A lot of what is at the root in our um, current human condition is simply what we call xenophobia, the fear of the other. Now, xenophobia made a lot of sense when, when you know, in thousands, thousands of years ago, when the name of the game was simply and only survival. So if someone else showed up that we didn't know who they were, or they spoke a different language, or they looked a little bit different, the natural reaction was to defend and protect what was ours in our camp or in our cave. And so that, that idea of, of, of conflict has been very rooted in human consciousness. But somewhere along the line, we did start to learn that we actually had could survive better through cooperation rather than conflict. Now we haven't fully gotten there. We have a long way to go. And um, Gloria, I think you just said, you know, you, you or maybe maybe Mary, it was you that just said about, you know, are, are you going to live to see the the kind of world that we would like, the kind of um, um, the unity that I think we were talking about. Um, but I think what is gives me a sense of peace is knowing that that I have made some contribution to making the world a better place. There's a, a beautiful song that is called The Great Mandela. You may have heard of that song. Uh, the, the Great Mandela, um, it, um, it, it moves through every, I'm, I'm paraphrasing the lyrics, it moves through every moment of time. Win or lose now, you must choose now. And if you lose, you've only, you're only losing your life. But the point is, you've done something while you were living. Okay, so you lost your life and you made a difference. I think another part of it is, um, um, along with xenophobia, is um, you know finding balance in the way that we approach the world and you know the balance between I feel like um, you know this country is so far on one end of the spectrum as far as individualism and there are other yeah. countries that are on the other end of the spectrum you know finding that middle ground and realizing that yes we do have individual rights but we also have uh, collective responsibilities too yeah. and working Absolutely. together to make the world a yeah. better place yeah yeah, well said, Kevin. Mary. Hey, Kevin, I was, or Patrick, I was thinking, you know, as Kevin was saying that, you know, that whole concept of how is God calling us as individuals and as secular Franciscans to be instruments of peace and unity in our world? So in our own little space, in our own little area of our life, how are we being those instruments of peace and perhaps having it radiate out from there. And I think that's kind of what Francis is talking about here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a really silly thing, but this is what Kevin and I, I he, he doesn't know this yet, but this is what we're going to do this week. <laughs> One of these days this week, we get takeout and we bring it home, right? It's going to be at a Chinese restaurant and we're going to wear our St. Michael's fraternity shirts. It's what we're going to do. Just there you go. Uh, it's silly, it's stupid, but hey, it's something, you know? No, it's it's supporting. That's awesome. One thing that I, I like doing is there's that um, uh, Mid-Eastern restaurant right across the street from St. Clement. 
Oh, and, yeah. you know, yeah. the, the guy there um, would, you know, one night he said, you know, I'll be with you in a moment. I, it's time for me to go pray. And he put down his prayer rug back in the kitchen. Hmm. And, you know, all of us were there with our St. Michael shirt on supporting, you know, and we're basically in a, in a very halal um, Muslim establishment, yet we're all wearing our, our St. Michael's uh, Franciscan fraternity stuff. And I felt like, you know, there was a sort of kinship there. I felt, uh, you know, you know, I remember that. I remember yeah. that night, Greg, and just you talking about it right now still brings goosebumps on me. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that too. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's called the um, the five yeah, star five star Mediterranean restaurant, and the family is yeah. it's uh, you know I'm surprised that they're still open because I went in there about two weeks ago with a friend, and I and uh, they um, they're barely hanging on. Ninety percent of their business now are takeout orders, and the and the family they're from. Uh, Beirut, Lebanon, and the the uncle who goes by the name of Chief um, owns that little right next to the Dairy Queen. There's like a little um, kind of a 7-Eleven type of store, and that's the uncle's, his chief, and then it's the cousin and uh, that or nephew that has the restaurant, and then sometimes the the older mother is there helping out. But you know they are barely hanging on. I don't know how they keep the doors open. Um, financially um but i guess enough because people are calling in their orders and picking them up and they are really lovely lovely people i uh, i'm at the point now when i go in they know me i know them i give them a give them a hug it's like going to you know my aunt and uncle's place or something it's really they're really lovely people we used to eat there when we met in person yeah before the meeting I and remember, I never joined you, but I remember that. that. Yeah. He's yeah. like, we miss you guys. When are you coming back? And I'm like, we're not even meeting in person right now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, wow. and yeah, they, they are, they are definitely struggling. Yeah. But he's got this amazingly positive attitude. Yes, he does. Like, this yeah. too will pass. Yeah. You know? Well, I'm ordering from them tomorrow. There you out. go. I'm gonna pick there it up. Go. Yeah. I, I should I'd rather get it from there than anywhere where else, to be honest. Yeah. And their food is delicious. Oh. Yeah. Yes, John. <laughs> I, I, the, the, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm listening as we're talking, and the thing that really occurs to me is, you know, you, you can look at the, the, the state of humanity, at the state of the world, at, you know, that this is sort of the, you know, the division and conflict are kind of the original, original sin, if you will. Um, sort of the flaw in humanity and yet if you look at it I mean you look at it, you look at, at you know what what Jesus what Jesus teaches in the gospel what Francis tried to live in his day and really it's it's our charism as Christians as Franciscans is to bring you know to bring some kind of unity to these divisions. And it's not gonna be easy. It wasn't easy for Francis and it wasn't easy for Jesus. But that's that's where the hope of humanity lies, is in people who are willing to take that risk. I'm glad we're doing this as we hopefully are coming out of the pandemic and we're learning how to be social again. <laughs> yeah. Some of us never did know how to be social. <laughs> <laughs> My other group, the Optimist Club, they're all excited because May 1st, we're gonna meet in person. And I'm thinking, I'm 
means I got to drive to and from Fairfield and bring stuff and clean up. And it's like, I just as soon stay at home. I can open my own bottle of wine. I can eat what I want. I don't, I can be in my pajamas. Nobody cares, you know? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I like seeing everybody, but it's, I don't have to be all touchy feely and give you a hug. I don't think. I am, I am so done with Zoom. <laughs> I get. I just got home from work at seven fifteen, and here I am. I it everything screams, shut it down, go take a walk. I just yeah, hate yeah. Zoom. I mean, I love that it, that it works for us, but when do you think we could meet in person? What do you think? I'm thinking that by July, everybody in the fraternity, well, maybe even in June will have had two, two, two yeah. vaccines. Two vaccines and then two weeks past the, the second right. one, yeah. Should, should we meet outside or you think we could be inside? I think either one, although in July, unless it's really hot outside my- Oh, place. cicadas too. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> we'll, be done, we'll be done by July. <laughs> I think July sounds good. I think that's what Biden is shooting for and what um, DeWine okay. is shooting for. So when I look okay. at, you okay. know, our officials that are supposed to be guiding us on public health, you know, they're, I think they're all kind of saying maybe their goal is July, but. Yeah. Are you even going to be in town for the meeting in July? No. <laughs> that's what I thought. Boo. Put at Mary's house. Boo. <laughs> Well, Paula's staying at our house, so just clean up after you're done. That's all. I know. I go out of town and Paula has a party at my house, too. What's up with that? We need new dog sitters, Mary. We need new dog sitters. <laughs> oh, I got another wrinkle for you. Greg's cousin and aunt might be coming in, too. So you may have. They're easy, though. They live in the basement. They call that them that their apartment, and they could use... If we have a car, well, I don't know if we'll have a car for them. But anyways, they come and go. So don't don't worry if they're there. But no, don't worry about it. it, it our house is Grand Central Station when once the weather breaks. That's my point. Party at Mary. <laughs> <laughs> And there's a chance that if they do come in and if they come in that week, they might go with us to Alabama. So that's it's, true. Uh, too. It's still up yeah. in the air. Mm. That'd be kind of fun too. They won't get in our way. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're Franciscan. We'll just invite them to the party. Exactly. exactly. Right. They can just be part of whatever we're doing. So were we gonna make this a potluck? Everybody bring something? Yeah. For July? Okay, you better good, save right? some, freeze some for us so we can have a taste. <laughs> leave the leftovers in the fridge. <laughs> You'll have something to eat when you get home. <laughs> That's funny. I think a potluck would be nice. I think it would be great. What's the date in July? Um, the 23rd. It, 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 it'll be the, the 23rd. Um, it'll be the 9th. Yeah. The Friday is the 9th. So right after the holiday. We will be home. You will be home then? Yeah, we're not leaving till that Sunday. Ooh, is that going to be a problem for you? Well, I take that back. We'll probably leave that Saturday because we, we check in Sunday. We'll probably leave super early Saturday morning. Maybe we, oh, brother. I was going to say, you don't want us coming then. Uh, You're leaving the 10th? Try to leave. Um, yeah, it's Sunday to Sunday. We can it's always have it at our house if you want. We don't have the pool, but we can, we have well, a backup. Or you could start at our house and then end up at Janine's house. <laughs> yeah. That's Mary, cheap. it won't matter. They can come to our house. Yeah, we'll It'll just go fine. to bed. It's don't worry about it. We'll, we'll be fine. We, we, don't, we won't even have to go to bed. We'll, we'll be Executive fine. committee at your house. What's that? We'll be fine. On the 10th, we're having the, the 
regional executive council meet at your house. Okay. Okay. So we have one Friday night too. I mean, what the heck? <laughs> Except we yeah. want to keep you up too late so you can get out. Early. We'll have it all set up for you guys. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you party, we'll just go to bed. I mean, if we have to go, we're to not going to party. Bed. It's us. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> We oh, might talk on. your ear off, but already. Mary, between between ever all the adults in our car, you know, we can switch off driving. I don't think it'll who, matter that much. Who's going to be in our car besides us? Possibly Joseph, me, and you. Yeah. So between the three of us, if he's going. Well, and to be honest, even if we we were not going to leave at three o'clock in the morning, I I just don't do three o'clock in the morning. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's ambitious. Anyway, um, Diane, did you have anything else you wanted to share? Um, no, because I'm, I'm actually going back. Uh, this has been a great discussion. Um, yeah. I'm kind of going back on what I initially said about doing an overview of the whole letter. And I think, you know. Well, here's what I want to ask then, as you're thinking. Okay. So you said there were eight chapters to it there's eight chapters okay yes let's see there's one two three four five, seven eight nine ten there's 11 people on this call so we could pair up and everybody take a chapter and see what you think and we won't do them sequentially every month but when we do this topic whoever did that chapter dive into it and then share what you think and then we'll tell you what we think of what you think you think that's not that's not that sounds pretty good that sounds like a very fair plan yeah what we let's see there's 11 of us but we, we, you know greg you mind if i challenge that just for a minute blue go ahead go because i've not read this so i don't know well, i haven't we, either nobody don't has read that for diane and paula so I don't know if it's it sequentially. Right. So I'm just scanning through it and I'm looking yeah. at the very first words of chapter two. And it says, the previous chapter should not be read as a cool and detached description. So like if I'm doing chapter two, now I have to read chapter one and know what that's about. Does chapter three build on chapter one and two? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, that's okay. We're not, I mean, next month, I didn't think we were doing this topic or are we? You're, you're on mute, Paula. She's thinking about it. Yeah, she's thinking about it. Yeah. I don't remember if we. Yeah, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't. I mean, they. I don't think they have to be done sequentially. But it's probably easier if it's that way. But what if we said that next time we meet? We'll dive into two. Do you think I, we could? Yeah, I think I think we. I mean, I think unless somebody's really, really wants to dive into all the problems in the world, I think we've 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 talked around and uh, and about a lot of what he talks about in chapter one, the mm -hmm. um, the dark storm clouds. What were you trying to say, Paula? I, I was just thinking that to a certain degree, they tend to, they're, they're not like silos. They tend to build on one another. Mm -hmm. You know, the first one, first chapter talks about the world as it exists today. You know, our regression into more xenophobia right now than we had 20 years ago. You know, I mean, there were times that we could work across the aisle and now it's like, oh, just because you said this, I'm against it for no really good reason. Um, and that works on both directions, I, you know. Um, so, I mean, it, we, we have talked a lot about chapter one. Mm -hmm. And then you know, I think from there he builds on things on where we need to go.
So my, my proposal still stands. If people want to grab a chapter and dive in, why not? I think that's a good idea, but I think it ought to be sequential. Oh, sure. Because it, it does build on each other. It doesn't have to be month after month. That I guess that's what I really meant by sequential was not that we wouldn't do them in order, but that we may not do it every month. We might skip a month and do a different topic, then come back. That that's I'm sorry if that was misleading, but what I really meant was we might not do this for the next eight months or seven months. You know, we would we would do something else every once in a while. I, I like sorry I can't remember now. What did we have a thought for May? I forget. <laughs> Or were we planning on doing some more of this next next time? I don't know if we talked about that. That's what I'm wondering. Yeah. I I thought we were gonna I thought we were gonna do this for a couple of months. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, and then and then do okay. and then do something else. You okay. know, it's interesting at, at, at the end of chapter one, you know, he says I would like in the following pages to take up and discuss many new paths of hope. So I think They're 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 all they're all connected, but I think each one will stand nicely on on its own. Kevin and can, and I we can break the ice and say we'll take chapter two if you want. Perfect. I was just gonna say who's gonna volunteer for two, <laughs> and then next time we'll see who's gonna volunteer for three. My, I have a cousin of mine who um, says the most profound things. She reminds me of Michael a lot and how, you know, the way she communicates, but she's divorced, broke her heart. She's now in a really strong relationship. And she said, I'm so scared. I'm like, are you really? She goes, I'm just learning to be okay while I'm scared. <laughs> I'm still moving forward. I'm just always going to be scared. <laughs> Yeah, we'll take chapter two. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for volunteering. Any other comments? Because uh, I have gone ahead and made a copy of the breviary for tonight if we want to end with the uh, evening holy hour prayer. I, I would like to say one thing. No. <laughs> okay. I won't say one thing. <laughs> say six things instead. Say two, three. <laughs> say two things. Hey guys, I'm going to bow out. Um, I, I missed an exit, and I've got a. Uh, I'm getting turned around, and I'm going to bow uh, out. So okay, good night, everybody. Bye. You can watch you this later. Hi. Bye. Anyways, um, on our our national JPEG group that is um, studying immigration. They sent out an email that talked about what's, what's happening on the southern borders and the work that our fraternities in Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas are doing. And one of the things that one of the, Brother David, who is a Franciscan, brother um they put out a list of supplies and things that are desperately needed down there to take care of like the children and you know such things as diapers you know personal care items giving them a travel bag you know with some games and puzzles as they're being sent off to some relative someplace and you know st stuff like that um, and getting them situated. And my thoughts to you all is, would people like to donate money so we can send them a check and give them, you know, some, some funds? And, th and they gave us uh, uh, who to make it out to. And it, it's, it's the Holy Cross, whatever. There's a an organization that'll take care of it all, that that they all work through. And uh, so your thoughts. 
Yeah, give us instructions somehow, whether we do it collectively or individually, send it out. We don't, we don't just, yeah. I can write a check I, from our fraternity. And I think that'd be a great thing for our fraternity to help support. Absolutely. Um, and for those of you who haven't fed the meow for a while, I, I, I'm happy to accept. <laughs> so basically send money to GLOW. Send money to me and then we'll write a check. Send and money actually to GLOW so, and then she'll send it out. Yeah, I, and then I will send it via whatever Paula's instructions are that she'll send me. So. I'll, I'll text you with the instructions. Good. Um, and John, I need you to write a really nice card and then we'll put the check in that card because you're really good at that. Got that, John? Um, <laughs> he was kind of like, I wasn't sure if he was frozen or what. <laughs> you can unmute now, John. <laughs> uh, oh, I guess I should turn off the recording, although we're going to do the prayer. So I don't know if we want to include that in the recording or not. So what does sweet Becky need to hear? <laughs> and actually, Michael, too, he's not here. Right. They okay. need to hear all of it. That's what I figured. So I haven't turned off the recording yet. But they're going to hear a lot of this banter. But, you know, that's part of being part of this group. Because the banter. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> True enough. So, uh, right, that's so we'll the, do that. That's the only thought I had. So I'll put in the chat my address. The only one I can ever remember. One, two, three, four, Joan. Yep, it's right. so easy. Hamilton. Hamilton, Ohio. I hope I didn't do it right. Ah, ha, ha. I did type too soon. There we go. There I am in the chat. Okay, so without further ado, let's, would you like to do the holy hour or do you want to do something else? If we do the holy hour, everybody's got to mute and you got to just pick people to do responses. Okay. Otherwise, it's an absolute disaster. <laughs> I can do that. Glow, don't pick on me because I don't know when I'll start coughing. <laughs> okay, dear. <laughs> All right. Can everybody see it okay? Uh-huh. Yeah. I'll make it really big. <laughs> Is that too big? Yeah. Real nice. Name of the Father That's and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And um, again, everybody mute um, unless you're going to read. God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. John, your part. I confess, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. I confess to all my God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, what I have done, what I have to do through my fault, through my fault, through my grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary, Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Paula, you want to do the Father Ray part? <laughs> May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Keep going. At the Lamb's high feast we sing, praise to our victorious King, who has washed us in the tide flowing from his wounded side. Praise the Lord, whose love divine gives his sacred blood for wine, gives his body for the feast, Christ the victim, Christ the priest. Sandy? Is she still here? <laughs> Trying to unmute. There we go. Where the Paschal blood is poured, death's dark angel sheathes his sword. Israel's host in triumph go, 
through the waves that drown the foe. Christ, the lamb whose blood was shed, Paschal victim, Paschal bread. Let us with a fervent love taste the manna from above. Don? Mighty victim from on high, powers of hell now vanquished lie. Sin is conquered in the fight. fight. You have brought us life and light. Your resplendent banners wave, you have raised from the grave. Christ has opened paradise, and in him all men shall rise. B. Easter triumph, Easter joy, sin alone can this destroy. Souls from sin and death set free, glory in their liberty. Hymns of glory, hymns of praise. Father, unto you we raise. Risen Lord, for joy we sing. Let our hymns through heaven ring. Kevin? Praise our God, uh, all you his servants, you who fear him, small and great. O come, bless the Lord, all you who serve the Lord who stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God. Lift up your hands to the holy place and bless the Lord through the night. May the Lord bless you from Zion, he who made both heaven and earth. Janine. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Keep reading. O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Therefore, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Take to heart these words which I enjoin on you today. Drill them into your children. Speak of them at home and abroad, whether you are busy or at rest. Patrick? <clears throat> Protect us, Lord, as we stay awake. Watch over us as we sleep, that awake. We may keep watch with Christ and asleep, rest in his peace. Alleluia. Christ is the light of the nations and of the glory of Israel. Lord, and now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of everyone, every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Protect us, Lord, as we stay awake. Watch over us as we sleep, that awake we may keep watch with Christ and asleep rest in his peace. Hallelujah. Mary. Let us pray. Lord, be with us throughout this night. When day comes, may we rise from sleep to rejoice in the resurrection of your Christ who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the all-powerful Lord grant us a restful night and a peaceful death. Amen. Keep going. Queen of heaven, rejoice. Alleluia. The son whom you merited to bear. Alleluia. Has risen as he said. Alleluia. Pray for us. Pray for us to God. Alleluia. Rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary. Alleluia. For the Lord has truly risen. Alleluia. Amen. 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 Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <sighs> well, my friends, what a wonderful night. Oh, yes. I guess I should press stop recording now. <laughs> yep.